Will everyone, with the exception of family members, please stand? O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. As we enter into the house of God, we give praise to his holy and righteous name. The Lord Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Thus saith the Lord, he that believes in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. And he that lives and believes in my name shall never die. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we shall carry nothing out. The Lord lives and the Lord hath taken away. Bless be the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, help me to know my end and the number of days that I should have to live that I may be certified. For a day in your presence For us, it is as a thousand years, but for you is as one day. And so, O oh God, teach us now to number our days that we may be certified how long it is that we should have to live. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Before the earth, before the mountains, were moved from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever shall be, world without end. Amen and amen. While you remain standing, we are here today to celebrate the life of one of the great champions of our faith, one who deeply trusted in the God of his salvation and demonstrated that faith in his service to humanity everywhere he went, James Gibson our fallen brother who left this world just the other day to spend eternity with the God that he had talked about, that he had served, that he had loved, and loved by demonstration of how deeply he loved us. And so we're here to thank God to worship, to comfort, and to find solace in the very presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The service is now in the hands of our assistant pastor, the Reverend David Francis, who will be our liturgist and our leader in worship. Let us open our hearts, our minds, to receive what God would have us to receive from heaven today and to share our love with those 
who grieved the loss of our good friend, James Gibson. Pastor Frank. Let the church say amen. amen. We will now have the honorary playing of taps by the bugle call. And the church said, Amen. 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 Let us continue the worship, our worship and our celebration of the life of our brother by the singing of our opening hymn, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. Time is filled with swift transition. Nothing on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging home. Dexter, Dexter.
Let the church say amen, amen. and amen. Time is filled with swift transition. Naught on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Let's repeat together our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life that's everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. A scripture reading from the Old Testament will be the 23rd Psalm.
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from the New Testament, the gospel according to John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6, where Jesus is speaking to his disciples concerning his own death. He says these words, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And the way I go, you know. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where, are you go where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. This is the word of God to the people of God. May it soften your sorrow in this moment of grief. Draw nigh unto God, and God will draw nigh unto thee. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will hear your supplications. For we need not a high priest to bear our petitions, but each of us may come boldly to the throne of grace. It's prayer time. Let every head be bowed, every eye closed, every spirit, every heart prayerful as Deacon Cheryl Peterson leads us to the throne of mercy. I will look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Dear Holy Father, we come right now in the precious name of Jesus. We come, Lord God, calling on your name this day, Lord God. Be with us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for last night's slumber and for this early morning rising. We thank you, Lord God, for traveling mercies which allowed us to get here safely, Lord God. Now, Lord God, we just invite you into our midst. It says where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be here, and we are invite you in. We ask you, Lord God, to look upon this waiting congregation. Look upon this family, Lord God. We, we gather today, Lord God, to celebrate the life of Brother James Gibson, Lord God. He was your servant, Lord God. He walked among us. And we are so glad. We thank you for his life. We thank you, Lord God, for all that he meant to each and every one of us who was gathered in this place. And we ask you, Lord God, to be with us. Our hearts are broken today, Lord God. Lord, our hearts are broken. 
But Lord God, we know that you, all th you do all things well. You make no mistakes, so we shouldn't question why. But you saw it, not robbery, Lord God. You saw fit to call him home, and we have to accept your will, Lord God. It's not our will, Lord, but it's yours. We ask you, Lord God, to look upon this family, look upon this daughter, this granddaughter, the siblings, the son, and all those, Lord God, who have gathered here because of the impact that James had on us all, Lord God. He walked among us, Lord God. He was faithful, Lord God, to the very end, Lord God. Even coming to choir rehearsal the day before you decided to call him home. But Lord God, your word said, blessed are they that mourn for they should be comforted, Lord God. So we invite you, Lord God, please, Lord God, we need your comfort, we need your healing power, Lord God. Be with us, oh Lord, we pray. Lord, we do not, um, we are not in despair, Lord God, because we know where he is now, Lord God. We know that he rests with you. And you said in your father's house there are many mansions and that you have gone to prepare a, a, a place for us. So, Lord God, we know where he is and we know who he's with. So we take comfort in that, Lord God. And for those of us who are believers, Lord God, we know that we have not seen him for the last time, that we will meet again, Lord God, over there, over there, where the wicked shall cease from troubling and our weary souls will be at rest. So bless this service, bless this family, and continue, Lord God, to watch over us, Lord God. When we know that weeping may endure for a night, but that joy will come again, Lord God. And we hold you to that. We trust you, Lord God. And these things we ask in the precious, matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
Thank you, Father. Thank you. Church, family, we're not here to moan. We're here to celebrate. We talk about Jimmy. <laughs> How many of y'all been to those football games? We talk about James Gibson, <laughs> former member of this choir. But you know what? We're not going to let trouble last always. Right? I know you got to cry sometime, but that's all right. Because we know that Jesus, after a while, come on, church, trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime. I have to cry sometime. Whoa, so much trouble. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime. I lay, awake at night. I lay awake at night, but that's all right. That's all right. I know Jesus. Jesus he will fix it. After a while, trouble in my way. I have to moan sometimes. Sometime. Oh, so much trouble. I have to moan sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. That's all right. I know Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. After a while. Stepped in the water. Stepped in the water. The water was cold. The water was cold. Chilled my body. Chilled my body. Not my soul. Not my soul. I didn't worry. I didn't worry. Cause this I know. This I know. I know Jesus. Jesus he will fix it. After a while. After a while. Stepped in the furnace. Stepped in the furnace. A long time ago. Long time ago. Shadrach and Meshach. Shadrach and Meshach. Abednego. They wasn't worried. They wasn't worried. Cause this they know. This they know. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. Oh, after a while. After a while. Come on, church. Come on, my way. Come on, church. Oh, so much trouble. Trouble in my way. Cry sometime. I have to cry sometime. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. That's all right. I know Jesus. Jesus, you will fix it. I know that Jesus. Jesus, you will fix it. You know that Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. You know that Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I know Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. the church say amen. amen. Jesus, he will fix it. Amen. I got, I, got, I got good news for you. Jesus already fixed it. Amen. The plan was never for us to stay here forever. The plan was never for us to stay here forever. Think about that. You don't want to be 2,000 years old walking to the corner to get some bread. 
Amen. Amen. We're going to have reflections now. Jesus fixed it. We're going to have reflections now. Um, it's listed in your programs. In that order, they will come. The mic is set up for you there. I know. Ricardo, where's Ricardo? I will be right here. Okay, you, know, you can use this mic. Uh, let's greet them one by one. Amen. 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 Good morning, Canaan. Our deepest, deepest, deepest condolences to the family right here from Armel Chorus and Canaan. I just want to say, first of all, um, our deacon Donnie Hagans could not be here, but he would be remiss. He said, I had to say this, that if it wasn't because of him, Brother Gibson, the toy drive and the King's cooking wouldn't have been as much of a success that it has been over the years. And for that, we thank him for his life and his family. Mel Corbis. On today, we celebrate the life of a gentleman, the life of a soldier, and the life of a saint. Always dependable, never saying no, never ever have I heard a complaint. Whatever was needed whenever you were called, your response was magnified. Never looking for anything in return. Brother Gibson, most of all, it is God of whom you have satisfied. The male chorus of the Canaan Baptist Church of Christ will never, ever, ever be the same. The impact you have bestowed upon us, my dear brother, has blessed us all in Jesus' name. You served for countless years as our beloved treasurer, accepting our dues, balancing our books and various things. In the first tenor section, you sat the very first row, sat in presence for a choir of kings. Heaven has opened up the sky today and has showered us with tears, in acceptance of the angel they are about to receive. We are grateful to have known you in this lifetime, the Christian life, the Christian way you've lived. You have made us all believe at this time. Um, I'd like to have words from our chairperson, Deacon Mona Russell, on behalf of Canaan Baptist Church of Christ. Amen. Good afternoon. <laughs> As the de deacon said, we are here to celebrate a life and celebrate we will. My name is Deacon Ronan Russell. I'm the chair here at Canaan Baptist Church. To each family that is represented here, he has a family of blood, he has a family of mortuary, he has a family of Christians. I greet you all and let you know that we, Canaan Baptist Church, are here for each of you. Whatever we can do. I had the pleasure of knowing him, James, personally. He was a veteran, and I used to always gather the veterans together. He was one of two of my veterans that could still fit his uniform. And whenever he had the chance, he would wear it. And so my last memory was the Sunday before last. We were both coming in. We were on time. I just want everybody to know. And we waved to one another, and he always gave me that smile. And I want each of you to turn to the back of your programs if you have them. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. I know each of you can read, but it's so fitting. Think of me, light a candle and see it glow. Watch it dance when, when you feel low. Think of me, think of light. I'll always be here, day or night. A candle flickers out of sight. In your heart, I'll still burn bright. Amen, and God bless each of you.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Okay. To the Pastor Johnson and to the assistant pastor, to the officers and members of Canaan Baptist Church, to the bereaved family of the late Mr. James Gibson, and to my fellow colleagues in funeral service, and to the friends that are assembled here today to say good night to our brother, James Gibson. James and I have been friends for too long. It, it, it seems like we've been friends ever since that he came into funeral service. And there was a couple of things about James um, that was outstanding. Uh, not only was he an outstanding funeral director, but um, he had the pleasure of working for me at one time. And I sat him down for an interview and I told him, James, um, for my men, I would like for them to wear a black suit, black shoes, black socks, white shirt, and a black tie. James came to work the first day with a gray suit, a gray shirt, gray shoes, gray socks, and some psychedelic blue and gray necktie. And I said to myself, now what am I gonna do with this man? And then I said, let me see what he do tomorrow. The next day he came, he had on a black suit, a black shirt, black shoes, black socks, a beautiful black tie with a big red knot right here in the middle. And um, I, at that particular point, I just left him alone um, because he was gonna dress like he was gonna dress. And um, he did that all the time. He was a hell of a dresser. And he never dressed like a funeral director. He dressed like James Gibson. Gibson, talked about his family, and uh, he talked about his daughter, and uh, every once in a while when Monica would boss him around, he would say, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that old Monica. <laughs> and um, I tell him that Monica is gonna have her way, and that you're just gonna sit down and listen to what she says. But he loved Monica and he loved JD. And JD in recent times has gotten his life together much better. So Gibson went to his grave very happy and very proud of the progress that JD had made. Gibson was a Christian man. He believed in Christ and there were, every Sunday, when he got out of service here at Canaan, he would come by the funeral home and we would sit down and we would have our quiet time and we would talk. And for the last three or four months, I always ask him how was church. But for the last three or four months, he said to me, Owens, church, is much better. And every Sunday, it got better and better and better. So the last Sunday that he was alive, he says, Owens, I kid you not, it is as good as it can get. Church is just so good. And after Gibson made this departure, I started thinking back. And I thought about why church was so good. Church was so good to Gibson because Gibson was on his way to the church triumphant. Where Job said that the wicked is going to cease from troubling and where the weary would be at rest. Every day in the church where he was going was going to be Sunday and Sabbath was going to have no end. 
So our last conversation, we was talking about life and the storms that come and how they come and how they go. And um, I shared this song with Gibson, the words of the song, and I said, Gibson, you know what? This song kind of sums it up. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who ruleth wind and water, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. When the host of hell assail and my strength begin to fail, thou who never lost a battle, stand by me. Yes, in the midst of faults and failures, Stand by me when I do the best I can and my friends misunderstand. Thou who knowest all about me, stand by me. In the midst of persecution, stand by me when my foes in battle are Undertake to stop my way. Thou who saved Paul and Silas, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When the life becomes a burden and I'm nearing to the journey, O oh, thou the lily of the valley stand by me when I got finished the song Gibson said to me Owens I know the song and I know the man so today I said to Gibson good night Mr. Gibson I'll see you in the morning Good afternoon, everyone. I have written so many words down here to say, and so many people have said things that I would love to say and can't. So I'm going to keep this as brief, as short as I possibly can. But know that we, the family, appreciate and love all of you for taking time out and coming and sharing with us in the celebration of the sudden passing of our father, our brother, our cousin, our uncle, husband, and co-workers, we thank you because James loved you all so much. And it was shown last night. It is shown again today. So I just want to share just a couple of things. Um, my cousin Barbara Ann and I were talking last night and all we kept saying was watching, looking at James laying in his casket. We said, all right, James, it's over with. Come on, wake up, wake up. <laughs> because he would send us pictures of him lying in a casket. And I would tell him, James, stop playing like that. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm his favorite cousin. If y'all know him, you knew me. <laughs> But um, um, uh, let me see, I want to share how we would do Coney Island and the Bronx Zoo, my kids, his kids, anybody that came to New York, he just wanted to always show us things and take us places with the cookouts and the barbecues 
And uh, the creme de la creme was our Thanksgivings. I don't know of any bad Thanksgiving we ever had, but it started when I was a child and how we would travel to Philadelphia to, my, to our grandmother's cousins. And from there, we went to New York, from New York, we went to Monica and Leon's, and we just always loved on each other. There, we all, you know, there were always little things, but if he didn't smooth them out, it just smoothed itself out. So um, I do have a little short poem that I'd like to share that I thought was very fitting. And it was the day you went away. Today brings tears and memories of sorrow and regret. A day filled with such sadness, it won't be easy to forget. For everyone whose lives you touch, James, has always loved you so. And it is so hard to accept that you never have to go. And so this message is for you, James, especially to say this world lost someone wonderful the day you went away. Thank you. When you meet Mr. Gibson for the very first time, he's such a wonderful man that his character and personality just makes you feel so warm and welcome. And he always had kind words to say. He was very encouraging. He was just a lovely, lovely man. And he just instantly became your friend from the very five, first five minutes you meet him. Mr. Gibson is a friend and a true friend and just wonderful, wonderful man that you could ever meet on this earth. Never had a bad word to say about anybody, anybody. And it's just two times that I know personally that two people upset him and he was more mad that he got upset and not liking these people anymore and he was more upset than what they did to him. And that just shows the true character of Mr. Gibson. Very real, very real man and classic gentleman. And William Alderman is one of his best friends. And I know he's going to miss Mr. Gibson very much. And we're all gonna miss that phone call. And we all know that phone call, hey! How are you doing? When he said, and he just make you feel so warm and so, and we're all gonna miss that. I, I'm gonna miss that. Hey, Miss Kimberly, how are you doing? What's going on? How's that William Alderman doing? So we all have that special memory of Mr. Gibson. And Will wants to say for the past, from 30 years ago, the first time we met, we just clicked and instantly became the best of friends. And I love you, and I love you, and I will always miss you, and our times spent together as friends. Thank you, family. Thank you so much for sharing Mr. Gibson with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. We thank each one of you who shared with us from your heart, uh, your, your reflections and expressions of love for our brother James Gibson. Amen. At this point, we're going to have the obituary read by James' granddaughter, Ryan. Uh, did I say that correctly? Ryan, amen. Come forward. Good afternoon, congregation, family, friends, and loved ones. James Early Year. James Sylvester Gibson was born in Milford, Delaware on December 8, 1949. 
and was one of three children to his parents, Napoleon Buck Gibson and Rachel Young. Spending part of his childhood in Federica, Delaware, his parents later moved to New York City where he attended Morris High School. Upon completion of high school, he enlisted in the US Army where he would valiantly endure 23 months in Vietnam. James reached the rank of sergeant and was honorably discharged in 1970. After his military service, James earned an associate's degree from Manhattan Community College. While in college, James was fortunate enough to do a tour of Africa and study African and black history in Africa at the University of Ghana. After graduation, he then enrolled at American Academy McAllister Institute to begin his career in mortuary science. After obtaining his mortuary license, he, uh, he served his apprenticeship with David M. Judon Funeral Home in Harlem. His early career included working for many funeral homes, including Ortiz Funeral Home. It was under his partnership with Marco, Michael Ortiz that he was able to open his own brick and mortar funeral home on Tremont Avenue in the Bronx. He was happiest when he was serving the community and offering comfort to families. His faith. James was devout in his, in his faith to God and commitment to the church. James joined Canaan Baptist Church of Christ while the church was under the leadership of the late Reverend Dr. Wyatt T. Walker. He was a faithful servant within the church and answered many calls of service. He served on the trustee board and participated in serving annually for the Mother's Day celebration with the King's Cooking in the Spirit. He was also a proud member of the male chorus and served with vigorous enjoyment and zest. In 2015, he was awarded Unsung Hero, and his membership at Canaan Baptist Church extends well past 35 years. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. His family. James married Deborah Ingrid Salters in 1975 and soon after becoming the proud father of two wonderful children, Monica J. and Jay Dupree, both of whom he loved dearly and were a great source of his pride. He loved taking his children on outings, especially the zoo, and James was probably more excited than his children to see the animals. <laughs> he proudly proclaimed that his children were the loves of his life until he was honored with one granddaughter, Ryan Nicole, who totally captivated his heart. He adored Ryan and couldn't help bragging about her many talents to anyone with an ear. He was proud to be the patriarch of his family and would often remind the family to keep up with traditions. He enjoyed the holidays, especially Easter, where he enjoyed sitting at his sister Missy's table preparing eggs for the Easter egg hunt. And all the children wanted to find that golden egg hidden in the yard his life and legacy. James took enormous pride in his professionalism and sense of style. For those that knew him, you also knew James loved to dress and never shied away from bold fashion choices. He loved music and there wasn't a dance floor that he did not enjoy. James was fortunate to be able to travel both nationally and internationally, but was mostly fond of traveling to the Dominican Republic with his best friend, John O'Neill. James leaves to cherish the, his memories, his wife, Deborah Gibson, his children, Monica J. Reich and J. Dupree Gibson, his son-in-law, Edward Leon Reich, his granddaughter, Ryan Nicole Reich, his sister, Alberta Troy, his sister-in-law, Gloria Gibson, cousin sister, Sharon Custis, nephews, Nathan Taylor Gibson and Nathan Gibson Jr., nieces, Vastine Gibson, Cynthia Gibson, and Desiree Garrison, and a host of other relatives, friends, and colleagues. Thank you for that beautiful reading. And at this point, we will have another selection by our choir. Following that selection, the next speaking voice you shall hear will be that of the Reverend Dr. Thomas D. Johnson, 
senior pastor of Canaan Baptist Church of Christ, who will preach the word of God. Let us greet him now with a great amen. Some things I may not know. There are some places that I can not go, mm, but I am sure. Mm, of this one thing that my God is real for I can feel him within some folk may doubt yes some folk may scorn All can desert and leave me alone. Mm, but as for me, see how take God's part. For God is real. And I can feel him within. Come on, come Say, on. yes, my God is real. Yes, God is real. He is real in my soul. Real in my, soul. my God is real, real for he has washed, made me whole. Say, hey, his love for me is like your gold. For oh, God is real, how I can feel him. I cannot tell. Just how you felt when Jesus took all of your sins away. Mm, but since that day, see, since that hour. My God been real, for I can feel Him within. Say yes, my God is real. He is real in my soul. My God is real, for He has washed. Man made me whole. Say, hey, his love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for oh, I can feel him. Mm, say, yeah. Oh, my God. 
God is real. He is real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. Say, hey, his love for me. He is like your gold. For God is real, for I can feel. In my soul, yes, God is real. He is real in my soul. My God is real, for He has washed and made me whole. Say, hey. For me, he is like your gold. God is real, for I can feel him in my Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot tell you how much of a privilege it is for me to be able to stand and try to eulogize such a giant in the faith, and such a brother beloved, such a strong disciple of Canaan Church and such a great witness of Jesus and his love throughout the world everywhere he went. I was, I was a little anxious. I thought Brother Owens was going to sing that, that song that he was reciting. I was, my soul was starting to get happy and my feet were getting light. And, uh, but even in his recitation, what a wonderful, wonderful uh, reminder to all of us about uh, the love of Christ toward us. And uh, if we remain faithful t to God, um, then fair, surely fair and bright, uh, our place in glory when we come to that bar, when we see him face to face. I want to thank each and every one of you for your presence here. It's so, so befitting. Uh, the church, uh, the funeral service, uh, the military representation, good friends, uh, this male course whom he loved, to the depth of his soul, this church, Canaan, that he loved so deeply. Um, we are all here together today, and rightly so, to tell God thank you for just sharing the spirit of James Gibson with us for a little while. Thank you, Mr. President, Ricardo. I had forgotten, almost forgotten, the poet laureate that you are, and your words were so befitting. Uh, as you pay tribute to our friend and brother on behalf of this male chorus, who I cannot think about, James Gibson, without thinking about Canaan, mighty men of Canaan. Um, 
And there, there's so much I, I want to say, and our time will not permit, but I'll try to make note of a few uh, anecdotes, a few reminders of just how wonderful a man this was. Uh, on Sunday mornings, uh, when the male chorus was singing, back in the day when the mighty men of Canaan were um, in numbers, they would fill this whole, uh, all the way across three sections of the, of the choir loft. Never less, any less than two sections. And during the procession, James Gibson was the lead march. He led the male chorus in. Um, he had a style in his march that was regal. Um, it was a no-nonsense march. He wasn't marching to impress anyone, but yet his march was impressive anyhow. And he marched that, these group of men in, uh, sometimes to various selections, his truth is marching on, glory, hallelujah, to other selections under the direction of Professor Payne in Israel and later Dr. Allgood and uh, he'd come down that aisle and he had a style with him that just only he could give us. But one thing that I knew is that when he made his way down the aisle, church was about to begin. Um, this young man who just sang that last song, God is Real, Harold Hazley, has been under the illusion for many years that he was the best dressed man in Canaan. <laughs> but um, it was only because of the humility of James Gibson, who wouldn't take the, he wouldn't take the light off of anybody for himself. So he just let Hazley have that. <laughs> because in all reality, nobody, <laughs> Mr. Owens, dressed up on a Sunday morning like James Gibson. And he didn't mind putting on a little bling bling and some little accessories to go with some sparkly stuff. And, and that's just the way he was. Um, we cannot overstate the measure of loving kindness that God placed in his spirit. I've said this before, I will say it again, that if you had any relationship with this man at all, and it was an opportunity to measure your own sense of loving kindness. Because if you could not love him, it's not likely that you would have loved anyone. Anybody that couldn't love that man, get along with him. Now, of course, there's always that side of us that people don't know. But the part that he allowed us to know of himself could not help but make you a better person. He taught me, along with Brother Owens down there and others, Mr. James and many who have come to serve our church, taught me how to uh, understand the New York style funeral. It's very different than a Southern funeral. A Southern funeral, you would have had 500 floral arrangements scattered across here. You'd had fans, ushers would have been passing out fans all over the place. The windows would have been open because in a country church, they may not have had air conditioning. And uh, it was what was truly a home going, where there was shouting all over the place, and singing, and whatever that person represented in their community was brought out. Uh, and uh, James Gibson helped me to understand how to transition 
into a New York eulogist. And uh, the first service we had here at Canaan during my time here was uh, James was the, the director. And I jumped in the hearse with him. We drove way out up Long Island somewhere, and he schooled me on all the ins and outs. I was just so surprised at how much it cost uh, to have a funeral in New York City. Um, those are just some of the little business things. But then he was always there to volunteer himself in service to this church whenever the call went out. And for that, we all here at Canaan give thanks to God. In the Bible, and, and, and Rollins is right, these last few months, it was Canaan, we noticed something very different about Bud Gibson. He, he had a, there was a certain uh, spirit in him uh, as he sat over on the far side every Sunday. He wasn't with the male chorus as often, but he sat over there near you, Deacon Davis, and he was all, he was into the worship and he was celebrating his faith. Never once would he leave this church without coming to me and say, I have to always come over and shake my pastor's hand. And he'd shake my hand, and then he would depart. And so that reminds me of another situation that occurred in the Old Testament. Jonathan, who was the son of King Saul, was a good friend, very good friend of David. And if we turn to the 20th chapter of 1 Samuel, in the 18th verse, you will find where Jonathan says to David, uh, David, uh, tomorrow is the new moon, and you will be missed because your chair will be empty. The preface to that short verse is that Jonathan and David had become beloved brothers. As Samuel describes it, Jonathan loved David to the very depth of his soul. There, there, there's a great difference between uh, eros love, phileo love, difference between those kinds of love and that of agape love. Agape love is when we manage to muster enough love for an individual that our love is likened unto God's very love toward us. If you can ever love somebody like God loves you, then you are truly in love. Love, the term love, is tossed around in the 21st century like some, some smorgasbord of, or buffet uh, item on at Golden Corral. You get as much of it as you want. You turn back what you don't want. You, you can take none of it at all. It is a loosely given term. I love you. I love you. Loose. You remember Flip Wilson once said, loose lips sink ships. Or as one other said, you are talking loud, but you are saying nothing. That I hear the words coming out of your mouth, but there are, there's no demonstration in what you do that convinces me that you mean what you say. 
Hmm? Uh, Deacon Diane, uh, ought we not be careful when folk come to us and the first words out of their mouths is how much they love us? Because I heard Jesus ask Peter, do you love me more than these? Peter said to Jesus, well, Lord, you know I love you. Well, hold up, hold up. He asked him again, do you love me more than these or do you love me more than these or do these love me more than you? I don't, however you decide to frame it, the question sits right there on the heart of, of his closest disciple. And I will note it is not the one that the Bible tells us that Jesus truly loved. Not Peter, it was John, the one, the beloved disciple. But Jesus says, well, if you do love me like you say you do, and because you're frustrated that I'm asking you so much, then why don't you demonstrate? Why don't you show your love in the ministry that is assigned to your hand. What I love about this little meeting between Jesus and Peter is that Jesus didn't try to embarrass Peter in front of the other disciples, but pulled him aside for a private conversation. And I say to you today, beloved, I pray to God that you and I have all at some point in our journey toward our own destiny have stood on the shoreline with Jesus and had a private conversation with him about how we show our love toward one another. Going back to Jonathan, love David to the very core of his soul. And this was a very difficult moment for Jonathan because Jonathan's dad, Saul, was preparing a fatal encounter with David because David's popularity had exceeded the kings throughout the kingdom, especially among the women. For Saul had the women singing about his thousands, but the women changed their tune, began to sing about David and his tens of thousands. In fact, I'm a little envious of that suit Brother Gibson has on this morning. I have to repress that to remember that there was so much more to the man that I loved, even with the exceptional uh, repertoire he had in his closet. Saul was going to kill David, and uh, Jonathan gave David advance warning not to show up for the big banquet that occurred when the new moon showed up. You can't come. In fact, we cannot meet again as we have enjoyed meeting for all these years. And they met out in the field one day and Jonathan said, tomorrow is the great banquet. And I'm going to miss you. Because you're not going to be there. Your chair, where you normally sit, will be empty. And when you love somebody like Jonathan loved David, that had to be a hard thing to say. And when you love somebody like we all love James Gibson, when God told us the other day that tomorrow is going to be a new day, but James will be missed. Why? Because his seat is going to be empty. Come tomorrow, there won't be that face that we are so accustomed to seeing 
over there in that second, third pew. Come tomorrow, we won't see James standing where he stood for years to bless us. Come tomorrow, you won't see him leading families around to comfort them and to move them peacefully through their time of grief. Come tomorrow, he'll no longer be saluting his commanding officers in the military. Come tomorrow, family members won't have those dinners and gatherings that he brought so much joy to, but take courage. Take confidence. Be encouraged. Because James lived out a life that left enough substance with us that even though he may not be here in the body, but his spirit shall live on among us for a long time. I think, I think, yes, I, I'm going to surely miss him for all kinds of reasons. You are too. But he left enough juice here. He left enough in the bread basket. He left enough meat for us to feast upon that will serve to make us better. And that's what you ought to hope your life does for somebody. To not make them bitter. You ever met anybody like that? Come on, you can say it. That all they do is make you bitter or try to make you bitter. And you have to muster all of the goodwill that you can to try to stay warm and loving and kind. But they're just hammering at you all the time. James lived a life that tried to help make us better. And so I leave you with, another, with the words to another song, Brother Owens. It went something like this, and I believe James would sing it to us this morning if he could. If I can help somebody. As I pass along, if I could cheer somebody with a word or a song. If I could show somebody out there that you're traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Have I got a witness in this house today? Don't you want your life to stand for something good? When you leave this world, don't you want to leave it better than you found it? Yes, then my living shall not be in vain. Yes, my living shall not be if I could just, and then if I could just be like Jesus, if I could show somebody uh, how to live in a world that was once wrought, if I can just show somebody and teach somebody what the master taught, then my living, hallelujah, hallelujah, shall not be in vain. Go on and rest, my brother. Sleep on. We love you, but you know what? God loves you best. We feel that sometimes you're torn away from us, but all that really happened is God receives you back to himself. We're able, God is able to subdue everything, dry every tear, remove every heart ache, and all sickness and pain shall dissipate where the glory of the Lord will be revealed, all of it, and you shall see and go up and see it for yourself. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Everyone, please stand with the exception of the family.
A man who is born of a woman is only here for a few days. He comes up like a flower, he flees as it were a shadow, and he never continues in one stay. But in life we are also in the midst of death, and of whom may we seek succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. And yet, O Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pain of eternal death, for as much as it has pleased the almighty God, who in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our fallen brother, we do now consign his body back to the ground from whence it came, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. And we look for a new day, another day, a day of the resurrection, when both earth and sea shall give up their dead, and our bodies shall be made like unto his body whereby he is able to do all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And now may the grace of God, the communion of the Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of you, my Father's children, for now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God said together, Amen. Soon and very soon, we're going to meet the King.